Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Today is currently Sunday, Japan time, November the 22nd, 3.14 p.m. And as usual, guys, I'd like to give you a brief summary of today's world news in a 5-10 to 10 minute YouTube video. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy. Please see the below description area as to who I am. Just started YouTube this year separately on a Japanese channel. Just started this English channel few months ago would appreciate if you press the button below and subscribe going forward as usual today guys markets are closed but Sunday's a good day just to do a refresher of what's going on in world markets after that I want to give you guys an update as to what's going on with what economic news will be announced this week lots of stuff will be announced then updates on coronavirus and then lastly give you guys an update on what's going on with a lot of new political news especially right now with the updates in uh, the presidential election with Michigan with Pennsylvania and Georgia give you guys a brief summary so let's get started first and foremost guys let's do a quick update on the market the markets are closed of course it's sunday but this is a great time to do a quick analysis on what's going on just as a catch-up for the one month so looking at the one month for dow jones here we see that the one month performance has been up 3.27 percent s p has been up 2.66 nasdaq also up 2.66 really interesting the both are the exact same TSX Canada up 4.39, Euro stocks up 8.4, FTSE up 8.38, uh, DAX Germany up 3.89, CAC France up 11.94, and IBEX Spain up an astonishingly 15.73%. Big movements there. Uh, we see here in the Nikkei has been up for the last one month, 8.55. Topics is up 6.28. Hang Seng is up 6.15. CSI China up 4.76. ASX Australia up 6.03. MSCI Asia up 7.27. So we can see here for the overall last one month, global markets have been quite strong. That's really because the last two weeks or so, the last two weeks, markets have just surged right after the election. Not really the election, but it was really the announcement of two large coronavirus vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna. And we also see here that actually for one month performance here, the U.S. markets are actually one of the lowest, which is interesting. All the other markets are much higher. And the largest is markets that are catching up like Spain here. Spain, I've actually been talking about for a while here. I think it's a wonderful investment longer term, especially it's still underpriced right now. See my below videos. I'll put in the actually I'll put it at the end of the screen uh, in the past so you can guys get an idea of what you should be buying for your investment portfolio in Spain. Let's now look at the uh, what's happening for world economic news. What's going to happen this week? This week, what will be announced is we're going to see PMI surveys for the U.S., U.K., Eurozone, Australia. So we're going to get a lot of updates on the economic situation for a lot of these G7 countries. Very important to watch PMI. Also, in the U.S., we'll be releasing third quarter GDP, uh, durable, durable goods orders. Oops, sorry, guys. Durable goods orders, personal income outlays, and PC index. In Asia, we're going to see China's industrial profits and South Korea's interest rate decision. I'd say the most important is going to be a lot of this is going to be the U.S. has a lot of economic news this week, uh, guys, uh, not just the PMI, but second estimate of GDP. And we're going to see uh, durable goods orders is pretty important as well. Um, I think actually Korea's interest rate decision might be sort of important as well, because uh, Korea, I mean, you know, just to see how that their central bank is going to react right now. We're having a lot of different central banks react differently, uh, especially China's central bank is reacting really differently. So let's see how South Korea's central bank will react uh, in accordance right now with the second or we might want to call it the third wave of coronavirus worldwide. Now let's move on to coronavirus and update on what's going on today. Uh, today announced for actually this was for November 21st announced was uh, let's see here 581,609 cases daily new deaths today was announced at uh, 8,922. So a little bit down from the day before, which is good. Uh, U.S. is also a little bit down. U.S. was yesterday 200,000. It was awful. Uh, today we're at 172,000. India around 45,000. Italy around 34,000. Brazil around 32,000. And then you see Russia, Poland, U.K., France, Germany, Ukraine, Iran, anywhere between 10,000 to 30,000 here. So let's continue to monitor this process again. Uh, you know, this is announced mm, the 21st, right? So 21st, meaning that this was testing data that was probably done for the most part on the 20th, Friday. So it should be weekday data so this should be accurate let's continue to monitor the situation hopefully the situation dies down in the u.s i'm secretly praying i am praying for the situation to die down in the u.s because i have to go see my family for the end of the year so now let's move on to political news today there was actually a lot of political news and this is all regarding the election um now the election it's it's just, guys it's such a hot topic and it's so heated on youtube 
uh, I'm, 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 you know, trying to somehow, I'm kind of trying to avoid the topic just because like, it's so heated. And uh, I could just see from the comments that everybody's very wild, you know, wound up about the situation. But again, guys, I'm here to just report you the facts of what I see from the news. And I'm trying my best to pick central uh, newspapers. I'm trying to pick central media sources. Again, what I'm using is what's called allsidesmedia.com. And each media source is basically uh, surveyed uh, by tens of thousands of people to say whether this is a neutral source, whether this is a you know, conservative source, whether this is a liberal source, etc. Almost every news is biased. So just note that I'm trying my best to report what I think is neutral. And at the end of the day, you guys can all fact check on your own to think what you think is uh, the correct fact. So what we're seeing here, uh, this is according to a Reuters article, which actually allsidesmedia.com rated this as a neutral source here. Uh, and they're saying here that in, uh, Republicans asked the Michigan Election Board to delay the certification for two weeks uh, and audit the Detroit votes, especially for Wayne County. That's where Detroit is. So uh, it seems that the Republican National Committee is still trying to uh, get this uh, certification to be delayed. Note that I think it's supposed to be certified Monday. So tomorrow, U.S. time. It's supposed to be certified, so the 23rd. Um, and right now, I think the Republican National Committee, it sounds like they're making one last attempt, but the Michigan officials are were quick to say that such an audit is not permitted under Michigan law, so it doesn't seem like it's going to happen at the moment. Uh, otherwise, we're going into other types of news. Uh, Pennsylvania, obviously, this is the conservative, it's a right news wing media, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do all types of news media, just so you can see. This is reported all over the place, on the left side, on the right side, and the central side, I would say. Basically, a Pennsylvania judge throws out the Trump lawsuit, uh, it seems that as Pennsylvania judge threw out a lawsuit that sought to prevent the state from certifying the election results in favor of President-elect Joe Biden. Uh, the U.S. Middle District Judge Matthew Brennan in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, rejected the request uh, in the Trump campaign, blah, blah, blah. Plaintiffs asked this court... To plaintiffs ask this court to disenfranchise almost 7 million voters, Brand said Saturday. Uh, so basically, say, he's saying that it was inappropriate and there was not enough evidence for the court to disenfranchise. Basically, the Trump campaign was asking to disenfranchise about 7 million voters. This court has been unable to find any case in which a plaintiff has sought uh, such a drastic remedy in the contest of election in terms of the sheer volume of votes asked to be invalidated. So they basically said no, <laughs> is what happened. Uh, moving on to Georgia. This is also a really hot topic right now, um, especially uh, this guy right here, Georgia Secretary of State. This guy's name is Brad Raffens Raffensberger. That's a long name. Raffensberger. Uh, he's getting a lot of, of heat right now from the Trump administration and from Republicans, uh, you know, basically because this guy, uh, he, he, you know, he, he's he's for the most part, he's a Republican, right? He's a Republican and he's not allowing an audit. Uh, so that's why he's getting a lot of heat. Obviously, in Georgia, there was a hand count. There was a hand count process and a hand count uh, gave, uh, I think, Trump an extra 800 something votes. Uh, but it didn't really change the election outcome. And now the Republicans are asking for an audit. It seems that Lindsey Graham, a uh, very famous uh, South Carolina Republican Lindsey Graham, was asking for an audit. And uh, basically, uh, Brad uh, Raffensperger said no, because that's not according to Georgia law. And we can see here, uh, you know, I mean, just from the defend, video here, you know, the secrecy of the absentee vote from any source, uh, any party, because we believe that voters need to know that their vote is confidential. They can. So he's basically saying you can't do an audit because that it's a confidential situation, uh, which is interesting. You know, you know, holler and scream and stomp their feet all they want, but we have a process in place, and so uh, it's not like I have a choice. And uh, you know, I. We, we have to follow the process. I felt that they were, were coming under pressure from the Trump campaign and they, they sent that out there. And uh, I don't know if it was a perfunctory uh, a request for, you know, my resignation, but. So basically, you know, people are asking for his resignation, especially from the uh, Republican side. People are calling him a rhino, which is a uh, Republican in name only. <laughs> Incredible. So uh, all this stuff is going on in these states. Look, guys, I'm just reporting to you the news, but uh, it's a still a very, very heated topic from a legislation perspective. Uh, point of view it seems that uh trump is in a roadblock right now in michigan georgia and pennsylvania at the moment uh because the judges are ruling that there is no uh right now uh there is no uh let's say there is no 
concrete evidence of fraud. There's a lot of affidavits and affidavits are different. Affidavits are when people actually swear and say, I believe this happened. That's not a concrete evidence in a legal court of law in the US. So that's the case at the moment. Uh, and it seems that the Trump administration is probably going to go at this point to try and uh, probably invalidate a lot of the votes from the Dominion voting system. So I think now the fact that they couldn't get um, you know, the state legislatures to agree on their side for, um, you know, an audit in, to be done, uh, then I think the next step is going to be probably going to try and see if there was any sort of misconduct in the Dominion voting system. So that's probably the next step. And after that, we'll probably see if the electoral system, the electoral votes, they can change the electorals. Probably not. I think that's a very, very long shot. It's probably a whole long shot, this whole road. But do note, guys, there's a lot of news out there. So please look up everything on your own. Please fact check everything on your own. It's so heated left and right. At the end of the day, guys, I think we should all fact check and we should all be careful because at the age of the Internet right now, this is what's called too much information, too much. And we don't know what's correct. So. Everybody has their own self-responsibility fact check. That's my main message today. Thanks, guys, for watching my news. I appreciate you watching. Please like the, uh, uh, if you enjoyed today's content, please press like below and please subscribe to my channel going forward. Thanks again, guys. I'll be doing some more videos today, especially on updates regarding the U.S. economy uh, and also an update on Ripple, which I've been actually recommending for the last few weeks and it has soared, skyrocketed crazy amounts today. It's almost doubled. So uh, I'll be doing an update on that. Look forward to the update. Thanks, guys.